Hello my dear friends, and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of coffee with snacks if you want, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about a woman who assaulted a kid trying to grab his stuff. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you'll enjoy it. I work at a hospital as a desk lady. This man came in with a younger man and approached my desk. If some of you don't know, many hospitals have restrictions nowadays. There are certain types of appointments where a patient can have a guest with them, but I would say about 80% of appointments are restricted so that it has to be just the patient. Unless of course, the patient is a minor, cannot speak English, or is not of sound mind or has a disability that restricts their ability to communicate. Hi. How can I help you today? I'm here for a doctor's appointment. Alright, can I have a name please? Yes, my son's name is, name. He's here to see, dr name, for, department name. It's for your son. How old is he? He's 30. He's, 30. I'm sorry sir, but I can't allow you to go back with him. This kind of appointment doesn't allow guests with the patient. But my son doesn't know what to tell the doctor. Oh I see, he doesn't speak English. What? Of course, he speaks English. Ah I see does he have disability sir? Even with his mask on, I can see the father's face twist into a scowl. Please note that this entire time the son has not spoken a word. He's just stared at me this whole time. Excuse me? No. There's nothing wrong with him. Well then, I'm sorry sir. But due to the recent circumstances, I cannot allow you to go back with your son. He has to go by himself. But he doesn't know what to tell the doctor. He doesn't even know where the office is. I can walk him to the office, sir. You'd have to tell him what to say now. In the meantime I'll need to check you in. Can I have a name again please? Finally, the son mumbles his name, but the father cuts him off to say it very loudly. I get him signed in, the father take a few minutes to talk to the son, and I step out from behind the desk to walk him to the department. When I get back to my desk, the father is still standing there. Hello, sir. Do you need anything else? No. I'm waiting for my son. I see sir, in that case I'm going to have to ask you to go wait in your car. We also have restrictions as to who can be in the waiting area. Well then how will I know when my son is done? He'd have to call you, does he have his phone on him? The father didn't answer me, he turned around and walked back out. About 20 minutes later, he came back in. Is my son done yet? Did he call you? No. Then he's probably not done. But how do you know? Can't you call and ask where he is? Or how long this appointment will take? No, I cannot do that sir. I definitely could, but I had no intentions of entertaining him when I had other people to help. There's really nothing you can do. There's always something that can be done. This is ridiculous. There is nothing I can do. I already took him down there. All you can do is wait for him to finish the appointment. The father finally left. About another 15 minutes he rushed back and right past my desk. Excuse me sir. Where are you going? To pick up my son. He called and said done with his appointment, I'm going to go get him. Sir you cannot go back to the office. Even if I let you, you would be escorted right back out. You need to leave the hospital and go back to your car. We have very strict restrictions due to the pandemic. But what if he doesn't know how to get back? He'll get lost. Then he can ask one of the nurses to bring him back. I cannot allow you to go back there. It's not my decision. I did not make these rules. Please leave sir. So finally the son came back out being escorted by a nurse. The father came back in one more time. Yes sir. How can I help you? I just wanted to make sure I get your name. Your behavior has been so shameful and I will be filing a complaint against you. I don't know how you people can sleep at night being so heartless and cruel. All right, sir, have a good day. And finally, he left for good. I was ready to start shouting at him to get out. I heard later from one of the nurses that he called the desk down there asking if he could come in. Of course, since the son was 30, spoke English and was of sound mind or had no record of disabilities that limited his communication, the answer was no. And of course, he flipped out at the nurse too, apparently calling her a heartless witch for making his son go to the appointment alone. He apparently told her that he always comes in with his son, and he's never been stopped before, so he should be allowed to come in again. Geez. The 30-year-old may not have any learning disabilities or other mental issues, but his development has definitely been hindered by dad. 
I wonder if dear old dad still do other things for him. Context. I'm a pretty avid swimmer, and I've been looking forward to getting back to the pool, now that restrictions are loosening up where I am. At the moment, they make every everyone enters the pool by going through the family change room, then you exit through the men or women's change room. They've staggered the swim end times, so there's not too many people in the change rooms at once. Well on this particular day, the kid swim lessons ended about 15 minutes before my open swim time finished. I suppose since there was only kids in the change room, the EM decided to go into the men's change room with her son after the swim was over. I suppose she lost track of time because 15 minutes later, myself and a couple other men entered the change room. Nobody really said anything and I didn't really think anything of it, since I figured she'd be long gone by the time I get back from the showers. Well I come back from the shower wrapped in a towel, and she's still there helping her son. They happen to be right next to my locker, so I decide whatever, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it, plus I gotta get going. So as normal, I take off my towel and start drying off when I hear a loud gasp, and this is how the conversation goes. Oh my god, seriously, can't you see I'm right here? Um what? Ugh I don't want to see what's under your pants. Um this is the men's locker room, I'm doing you a favor by not saying anything. Well the family change room is closed, so you need to be respectful of the moms that need to come in here. Why not take him to the women's change room, he's above the age of being allowed in the women's. Aren't you above the age of being allowed in the men's, pure rage I'm his mom, now please cover up. At this point I decide to just ignore her and keep doing my own thing, while she keeps giving me dirty looks the whole time. And on her way out she says next time, I'm gonna report you to the staff. Okay crazy lady okay. If he's above the age where he's allowed in the women's room, it's because kids that age are expected to be able to change without their mom's help. Here's the cast. Me equals me, obviously. EM equals entitled mom. NK equals nice kid. Dad equals absolute freaking cool man. Here's some context. I have a birth defect called fibular hemimelia. This birth defect causes part or all of the fibula to be missing. I'm missing the entire fibula in my right leg. This has caused some complications. For example, the birth defect causes length discrepancies in the affected leg, basically, my right leg is shorter than my left. Because of this, I've had to get leg lengthenings, among other surgeries. As of now, I've had over 20 surgeries, and I'm scheduled for another leg lengthening around late August early September. I've had to travel out of state to see a specialist, due to the fact that my old surgeon was kinda screwing up my ankle, my ankle is fine now, thanks to my specialist. This story takes place during one of my surgery trips. I was only 12 years old at the time, which was 5 years ago, but I still remember it vividly. Now for the story. So, this took place when I was about 12 years old, during a surgery trip. My dad and I had just entered the waiting room, and my dad went up to the front desk to fill something out I guess, I didn't really care. I had brought my 3DS, as well as a bag with a large portion of my games. As soon as I sat down, I pulled out Pokemon Omega Ruby, the 3DS remake of course, popped the game card in, and started playing. Eventually, a young boy, who looked to be around my age, came over, sat next to me, and started watching me play. After a particularly difficult battle, the kid spoke. What are you playing? Pokemon. Cool. Can I try? Since the kid had asked nicely instead of just saying let me try, I went to a place with some decent level Pokemon and let him battle for a bit. As he fought, I explained type advantages and disadvantages, and he actually got pretty good at battles. After about 6 or 7 battles, I asked for my 3DS back, which he did without complaining, which kinda surprised me. He then went back to his mom, who was actually sitting a few chairs behind me. A few moments later, I heard someone getting up. QEMEM began speaking to me somewhat quietly. At the time I thought it was just so she wouldn't disturb anyone, even though there wasn't really any other people there. I failed to notice that though, due to me focusing on my game. Hello. Hi. That was nice of you to let NK play your game. I just nodded. NK really liked your game. You should give it to him. Now, it's worth mentioning that my 3DS was a gift from my dad. He gave it to me while I was in recovery. I had spent about a year collecting games, and I still have that 3DS and those games to this day. So, upon hearing this, I turned off my 3DS, closed it, and put it in my bag. Um, I'd rather not. 
It was a gift from my dad and EM cut me off. God, you're so damn selfish. Give me the game. No. EM was visibly irritated and I guess she got tired of trying to make me give her the 3DS because she started trying to grab my bag. I really didn't want to lose my 3DS, so, using my left leg, my good leg, my left leg is just stronger, my right leg still works perfectly fine, it's just a little weaker, I tried pushing her away, which didn't really work. She then screamed something, which sounded a bit like her ass, and ripped me out of my chair, pinned me against the ground, and started choking me. A couple seconds later, my dad comes in and full on tackles her before getting on top of her, grabbing her arm and pulling as hard as possible. It looked as though he was gonna rip her arm off. At this point, my dad loses his crap and starts yelling at her, though I don't really know what he said, considering I was huddled in a corner, freaking out over the fact that EM just tried to kill me. A couple minutes go by and the police arrive, ask some questions, and then, I assume, went into a back room to look at the security footage. They came back out and promptly arrested her. She was charged with attempted theft, assault of a minor, and attempted murder, since she literally tried to choke me to death, almost did too. We ended up having to stay longer than intended, the first reason being, my dad had to go to the trial. She was convicted, thank God, and was sent off to prison. The second reason we had to stay longer was because of that whole event, I wasn't really prepared mentally for the surgery. We rescheduled, and when the time came for the surgery, it went off without a hitch. So luckily, there was a happy ending. I'm not dead, and EM went to prison. NK was picked up by his dad, and I can only assume that EM and NK's dad ended up getting divorced, if she's not still in prison that is. She can rot, in my opinion. Edit. After his mom got arrested, NK apologized. He did so multiple times in fact. He also said that this wasn't the first time EM tried to steal something from someone, but he said it was the first time she's ever gotten violent. The fact that this had happened before explained why he was unusually calm while his mom was being arrested. I would think most kids would be in tears upon seeing their mom in cuffs. NK almost seemed relieved. I guess he was hoping someone would stop her from doing something like that again. My dad certainly made sure of that. Bruh, first you let her son use it for about 15 minutes, second it was a gift, what the hell is wrong with her? I'm very curious what was up hers thinking she can demand a kid's game, then choke him in a waiting room for it. Hey, uh, just to let you know you're gonna need quite a bit of background info. So first of all, in my country, more specifically my state, when we have upwards of three corona cases, we go into a three-day lockdown. It might seem over the top, but it works really well and a week later we can lift restrictions. Anyway, we started a three-day lockdown a few days ago, and the day before when it was announced, the stores were kind of packed. And the buyers, etc. We had to grab some food, and I had to get some lady products. Usually, in a situation with four COVID cases, I wouldn't leave the house. Only 29% of my lungs work, so COVID would be hard to survive for me, and in terms of a mask. I can't walk or be moving a lot if I'm in a mask or I hyperventilate, I do have a doctor's note, and even still I prefer to at least try to wear a mask. The all the Karens out there who claim to have a medical condition, swallow it up and put on a mask. Anyway, I don't usually leave the house if there's COVID, but I had to this time, a la lady products. As well as this, we have my brother, who is younger than me but a smidge bigger. Anyway, he has profound autism, so he's non-verbal and is at about the cognitive ability of a two-year-old. He doesn't quite understand masks, but believe me, we do try. With both me and my brother being disabled, we do have a disability parking permit. Now, let our story begin. So we pull up to our local shop, and the parking lot is quite busy. This is a shop we frequently go to based on my little brother's constant requests for Powerade and frozen pizza. We must appease him. When we go to park in disability, both spots are taken. We notice that the second spot is a car that backed into their park and they do not have a disability sticker. They do though have a cuties on board. Sticker. Time is a risk for me being outside, so this means we can't park in disabled and due to the paths, we can't use the wheelchair except from that point. This means I can't wear a mask. So in we go, a weird large human screaming woo and a sticky girl without a mask. Most people don't go near us, so that's a plus. Wonder why though. For context, this is what the people at the store see. Anyway, this time we're stocking up for lockdown. 
We don't go too crazy, but my mum's Irish and she has the famine genes. So we get a bag of potatoes and ingredients for soda bread. I go off to get my lady supplies. When I get back, the store staff have called a code 1 which they frequently do when my brother comes in the store. Code 1 is to open a new register. This is because A. They like to keep him happy, B. He's scary. The store staff are pretty understanding of us, so they open another register, code 1. We head to this register and the staff member starts scanning our stuff. While we do this, our star of the story, entitled Mum, Karen, joins the register. She is holding a slobbering little boy without a mask. Which is fine, super young kids don't have to wear them, but it is still recommended. Karen is wearing a mask. Once again, for context, little big bro is not wearing a mask. We tried, but he poked a hole in it with his tongue. So uh, he wasn't wearing a mask, nor was I, but my mum was. Excuse me, you opened a new register do you mind if I hop in front? I have to limit my talking to limit my exhaustion and risk of inhaling COVID, weird, but still. Sorry no, we have to be quick, my daughter. Well my son and I have places to be, and it's risky out here. The employee has stopped scanning to talk to the woman. My brother does not appreciate this. Ma'am we usually open up another register for this gentleman, he. But it's about to be locked down, my baby is so little he can't wear a mask. Keep in mind this kid looks seven. And you and your two grown children aren't even wearing a mask. Sir, to the staff dude, you should push them to the back of the line. Little big bro is growing more displeased. Ma'am, they really me. Whoa. Whoa. Why? Karen screams and drags her child away, and that's that. We do see that she heads towards the car parked in disability, so that shows what a person she is. I understand that everyone's on edge, but like, my brother is visibly disabled. Earmuffs, wiggle shirt, etc. My mum didn't have time to apologize to Karen because I can't wear a mask and we don't have time. We pay nice staff dude and get the hell out. Anyway, not as exciting as other Karen stories, but there you go. So she thinks she's the only person who's got places to go. Get your head out of your butt, it's not the Karen show. Parking in a disabled spot and not being disabled is illegal by the way. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a woman who forgot her baby at the restaurant and then put on a crap show. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.